All right, so once you get the first step, which is developing the positive attitudes, then the second step for intuitive decision making is listening to your body. All right, the body is a very important part of intuition. It is highly intuitive. It will give you amazing information about people, about places, about situations, about decisions. If you just consult it, most people don't take the time to consult their bodies. Now, how many of you get up in the morning and ask yourself, how does my body feel about what I'm doing today? You know, how does my body feel about that business meeting? How does it feel about being with my boss and going in for that evaluation today? How does it feel about hiring you know, an employee and doing all these interviews today? You know, how does it feel? You know, how many of you ask yourself that? So I'd like to see a show of hands. Uh, sometimes ask yourself that. All right, and just for my information, how many of you never ask yourself that or, or haven't been trained to? Okay, good, I love honesty. All right, just a few. And those of you who never ask yourself, are you open to, to trying this? Is it something you want to do? It makes a huge difference if you ask yourself how your body responds. For instance, one good way to listen to your body is just to notice what your gut tells you about people in an instant. What your gut tells you when you first meet someone, what's that gut feeling? Do you feel comfortable with them? Do you feel beware? Do you get a red flag? Are you backing off from them? You have to listen to your body's signals when you're making these decisions. If you notice you're crossing your arms and you're taking a few steps backward, that's an intuitive sign. <laughs> and so it's something to be aware of. So when I say listen to your body, listen to your body language. You know, that in itself gives you an incredible amount of information as opposed to are you moving forward towards somebody? Are you feeling comfortable? Is your energy going up? Are you feeling uplifted? Um, do you feel, does your body feel relaxed? Do your shoulders relax? To notice all these signs in your body when you're around somebody. Very important to notice these signs and, and to be aware of them. Most people are not aware of them. The body responds anyways. It's just that we're not aware of what's going on. And so the beautiful thing, the beautiful part of intuitive awareness is bringing that question in, asking yourself, how is my body responding, noting those responses, and honoring them. You see, the second part, honoring your body's responses is very important. For instance, if you feel tired and worn out and negative around somebody, that's an important piece of information, of intuitive information. And so when you're making a decision to go in for a job and you meet your boss or you meet your potential coworkers and your energy bottoms out around them, this is important information so that you don't go into a work environment that's gonna be sapping you. Because let me tell you, I know many people who, have, who are in work environments that are quite toxic for them. And once they get in and they get the insurance package and the perks and everything that goes along with it, it is hard to get yourself out. It's hard to get yourself out, let me tell you. And sometimes it takes extreme measures to get yourself out. So when you're making that decision of going into a new work environment, of working with new coworkers, of having a new boss, of noticing the milieu and the energy in the environment, listen to your body. Do it first before you get involved, and so you don't have to dig yourself out of there. So just listening to whether your body is comfortable in an environment, and I use the word comfortable. Intuition will convey a sense of comfort, and comfort is something I highly value, a sense of comfort, that the body feels good in this seat, working at this computer, with this level of light, if there's a window in the room, if I'm comfortable with light in the room, I'm uncomfortable in a room without light. You know, to use your body, to tune into your body and ask yourself these questions. But be prepared, and this is really important, that your mind is going to talk, try to talk your body out of what it's feeling. <laughs> this happens all the time. Happens all the time. I'm sorry? Mr. Negative. Mr. Negative. Who, the mind is a mister? <laughs> yes, we personify the mind, don't we? <laughs> Mr. Who, does it have another name? <laughs> Mr. Negative. 
Mr. Negative coming back. That's how she talks about her mind. That the mind is very negative. It can be very negative. So when you're making an intuitive decision and you're, you're going into this new work environment and your body is saying, this doesn't feel right, but yet the money that's offered is very good, what do you do? You see, people are faced with this all the time. What if the insurance package is good? You know, what if the, you know, everything about this job is good except you don't feel good there and your body is not comfortable there? You know, these are really brave decisions to be made. You know, how do you make decisions about these things? Well, let me tell you, if I was in that environment, I would never go into it. I would say I would run for the hills in that environment if my body wasn't comfortable. You know, because what happens if you ask yourself about the decision, how do you feel? You ask your body, how do you feel? And it says, I'm not happy here. And you go ahead anyways into that work environment. There's, there's some pretty negative repercussions that can happen. The one repercussion is you can be exhausted and hate going to work. All right, that's the lowest level. All right, but I've worked with patients who have been in jobs like that and they've started to feel, they've listened to their body and their bodies have started to feel toxic. I had a one patient who was working in the school system and she said to me, I'm starting to feel like I have the flu all the time, like I'm toxic, I'm tired, I don't want to go to work. And I said, well, let's talk about another option because her, her intuition was telling her this job wasn't right for her. But everything was good about it and she was going to get some kind of a tenure there and, and so forth. So she decided to stay in the job you know, for a number of years. And then she was diagnosed uh, with breast cancer, all right? And it was this diagnosis, and I'm not saying, by the way, that if you stay in a job, you're going to get cancer. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But in this case, her body was giving her signals, you see, and she made a decision to stay despite the signals her body was giving her. And then she got the diagnosis, and the beautiful thing that can happen with these kinds of diagnoses, it, it can get you moving, and it can get you doing things. You suddenly see life is short, there's something you need to know anyways. Life is short. You don't need to get a, a, a diagnosis like that. You don't need to lose a loved one. You don't need to get in an accident. You don't have to do all those things to know life is short. You want to make the most of it. But in any case, that's what this diagnosis did for her. And she was able to say, life is too short. I'm going to go and, and be a real estate broker, which is what I really wanted to do, as I wanted to have my time as my own. I don't want to have to go into an office every day. I want to go in. She loves houses. She wanted to show houses by the beach. you know. And so she made this choice at that point to leave her job you know, after you know, she had chemo and she had treatment and she's been in remission for many, many years, but she made that choice at that point and the prompt was the diagnosis, you see? But now she's in a job where her body is happy. <laughs> so that's just a severe example, an extreme example. It doesn't always get that far. It could be, and I, I treat a lot of patients like this who are unable to make the decision to leave something where their body is telling them they're intuitively uncomfortable. They just start getting these diagnoses of Epstein-Barr, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, stomach problems, uh, acid reflux, um, asthma, you know, all kinds of these symptoms start happening, chronic symptoms when you don't make a decision that's in sync with your body. You start getting chronic symptoms, and this is a, you know, a place where you can get lost the rest of your life in the land of chronic symptoms. And that leads to doctor's visits, it leads to medical tests, MRIs, upper GIs, you know, all kinds of tests, and then you're in the whole milieu of going to doctors all the time because of your symptoms, because you're not comfortable in your job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I just wanted to track it that way so you can get a sense of what realistically happens when you don't trust your intuition to make a choice to leave something or to learn how to work with it in a different way in a job. It doesn't always require leaving the job, but it might require reorienting yourself to the job and maybe doing a different kind of work within the job setting. But my point is, when you're tuning into intuition, when you want to make decisions, listen to your body.